what's NLP? Well, where traditional psychologists have always been interested in studying the broken, the people who are mentally ill, the depressed, angry, not reaching their goals, hating life. That's who the psychologists study, traditional psychologists, that say. And so they are specialists on how people are scared, depressed, broken, not self-actualizing, low self-regard, no optimism, no mastery, not getting the most out of life, you know, and that's what, what psychologists, traditional psychologists are interested in. And then also psychologists are focused on working with the average or the unhappy person and NLP practitioners or master practitioners are interested in entirely different thing where psychologists like to study less than 100 college undergraduates usually the NLP people really for the past oh god decade since the 70s the think tank and those who are part of NLP have been traveling the world to find the most successful people in essence the outliers the dot above the median line the people that are, ha are extremely happy and in well-being, the people that may have had incredibly tough childhoods but found ways to overcome it, people who have been able to overcome fears or even phobias, brilliant goal setters that reached their goals, the people that found a way that how you can easily increase positive emotions, not just happiness and joy or relaxation and calmness, but also things like confidence, and to go from demotivation to motivation. Uh, you find people who are able to step into an excellent state and do whatever it is that they need to do from there, whether it's giving a public speech, negotiate, doing important things that require full and complete focus, studying athletes, how they use their brain to be in a top mindset studying conflict resolution specialists, salespeople, marketing people, people who persuade and inspire. How do they communicate? How do they behave? How do they think? How do they switch emotions? What are the step-by-step -step processes that someone does inside their mind or in their behavior? How do some people create achievements, step into flow, achieve mastery? How do some people walk in a room and everybody notice them because they're that charismatic? How do some people, how, how have they figured out to go from stuck to in movement, from demotivated to motivated, from frustrated to flow, let's say? How can some people build rapport very quickly so that people trust them and start sharing? How do people who can ask questions in a way through which what is not presented to be presented. How do you ask questions then, if you can ask questions in mastery? How do you observe ver verbal and nonverbal behavior in others? How, do, how can you figure out how other people use their brain or figure out uh, what their step-by-step -step process is? Switch out of anxiety and into excellence. If you find anyone who is good at anything, it doesn't matter what it is and you can figure out what all these people have in common in relation to how they think, how they sort of manage their emotions, what are the step-by-step -step mindset processes that they use inside their brain, how do they set goal, goals, how did they become who they wanted to become, how did they deal with their shitty pasts, how do they deal in the present with challenging situations? How did they leap forward into the future? How do I do all of these things? And what do they have in common? And can we create a series of techniques and tools and language patterns and behaviors that the average person can learn in seven days in terms of the foundation and in 16 days in terms of mastery? And if they keep practicing, they could become like those people in excellence. Those things that we often didn't learn from our parents, if that makes sense at all. Then you can take any person, whether it's a child, a teenager, an adult, anyone from any culture, anyone from any profession, and you can lift them 
into a personal change or a professional change for them to become better who they were. And that has been done since the 70s. Hundreds of thousands of people have been taught NLP. And NLP had some old tools that were discarded and some new tools added in because it's about wanting to drive the latest Ferrari, not the horse and carriage, right? And so people around the world have been taking NLP training and leaped their life forward personally and professionally. And that's probably how you, you learned about NLP as well. And so it may not be the science of the psychologist who study ill being and mental health issues, but it is the study of the successful. And it is tried and tested on thousands of people who trained it on, in NLP around the world. And that's NLP. So what does NLP then stand for? Well, neuro, it stands for, let's say the software inside your brain, where your brain is the hardware and the software is the coding that runs on that hardware, the operating system. How can you tweak that, upgrade that, learn different ways of using your brain, different options, different perspectives. Some things are immediate, very quick, like a phobia is easy, that can be fixed in under 10 minutes. Goal setting is easy to learn, and other things require you know, some repetition, learning, practice. And then the brain changes, the neuroplasticity in the brain changes, and you up your skill, and you can increase your happiness set point and your ability set points to beyond where they are now. Linguistic stands for the two language patterns that are a part of NLP. One is the language pattern of how you use questions to make the unconscious hyperconscious. Ever had a situation where you don't know why you did something over and over? You didn't know how it worked until you got this epiphany. It slid from your unconscious mind where you couldn't touch it to hyper awareness and conscious like, like, oh my God, that's how that works. There is a language pattern that can easily get anyone there. And then there is the language pattern of how do you give a motivational speech? How do you inspire? How do you get someone to sort of on your side, to, to understand you, to sort of like feel that, oh my God, I want that too. I want to have that. I want to be like you. I, I'm, I'm sort of like tapped into your belief system. So if you study people like Nelson Mandela or Oprah Winfrey, or you study people like Richard Branson or Martin Luther King, how do they use their brain? How do they use language? And can we then do the same? but in our own way. And that's linguistics. And then there is the programming. That's in essence, the coding. How do we use our brains in a way that we can take the resources from our past and transform or neutralize the shitty things and have resilience? How can we navigate our present in better ways? And how can we propel forward into our future? And those are a bunch of tools and techniques that are all in the toolbox of NLP that can be used by anyone, anyone who thinks, feels, behaves. And in any location when you do that, that is pretty much everyone and everywhere in every profession and in every context of your personal life. That's what NLP is.